Hello, 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 and welcome back to another Forgecraft the Mod Pack with me, Techno Jock. It's uh, time to do some more stuff with our World Eater in the Deep Dark. And, um, well, we've been, uh, we've not been hanging around. Actually, let's start here. Let's start here. So, I have set up a small proof of concept for a way of clearing out the stuff that's going to be in front of the World Eater. So it'll have a one ME controller which will be powered by a tesseract that we've got and we've got our annihilation planes and they will feed straight into a storage bus that will be on one of our ender chests which is out there. So if we take something like, oh it runs into whatever doesn't really matter. Boom! Straight away. Boom! 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 There we go. And it'll go straight into our chest, which, as you can see, has got some stuff already in it. Let's clear it out a bit ahead of what we're about to do, because, in fact, let's get, let's just take all the ores out, because there's a lot we need to do today. Lots to do, lots to see. Let's get rid of some ores into here. Now, this will automatically draw into our pulverizer and it will bung out these ores, which is great. It's what we want to do, but we've got more to do than that. Okay, get that ore, that, 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 and that's fine. That's everything that can be smelted, or everything we want to be smelted. Not smelted, pulverized. Good, good, that's fine. And tin into there as well. So, um, we've got another one of these chests under here which is feeding into our machine inventory manager, so we now have uh, 13 6 ore. Now, we have got the start of very nice going on over here. Let us see what we have down here. And as you see, I've done a little bit of testing, and as you can see, because it's a big one hole with no little bits in it, it has been working rather well. So it's turned off just now. We've got ourselves all of our eight of our mining wells, and this is set up just on the edge of a chunk, as you can see, so we can expand out. It's only half a chunk wide, but we can expand it out if it need be. I should probably have done it the other way, but it doesn't really matter. Hmm doesn't really matter. We can expand it, and that's ideal. So I haven't put a chunk loader on it as yet, but we've got all eight of our mining wells, and we've got eight ender chests across the top. So everything that spews out the top of the mining wells will go straight into our ender chests to be dealt with at the far end, back at the base. We have one tesseract which directly powers that mining well, connected to the this conduit which goes all across the face of the other mining wells, powering them. This frame line here attaches to these conduits and the tesseract and the front face of all the end chests, so they can move. It then goes across the back and goes down and attaches to the back of all the mining wells, so it goes right across. Um, and then it extends back into our caterpillar drive, which I shall go into in a second. Um, we have an arcane lamp on the front as a big headlight and to keep everything nicely lit here. Um, and this is the control system for the mining wells. So this is set up to, if it has work, turn on a red pipe signal. So this pipe would then go up to this gate, which is set to if a red set pipe signal is on, turn on the redstone signal, which outputs this conduit, which outputs to our timer here, which is just set to three seconds at the moment. That seems to be doing an okay job. And then this redstone repeater just lengthens that pulse into something that will actually activate this. Otherwise, it's a little bit too quick. It just goes on and off too quick for this to, uh, to register. Again, we go out to this conduit which goes in here and then out here, which if this is underneath, we'll get that. Um, and we can turn on and off the whole system just by 
this lever here. So if I flick that, it pushes that one forward and pushes the whole thing forward and then these start mining. Because this mining well has work, turns on the red pipe signal, turns on the redstone signal here, which stops this lever from working, uh, stops this, uh, sorry, timer from working, and it starts mining. But as you can see, we have a little bit of a backup in the system because, oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, it's just gone forward again. It runs for two cycles because it pushes forward and then stops and then mines and then pushes forward one more time before it goes back into the reset. So we, as we can see, have a problem. We've got far too much stuff in here and it's not being dealt with. We can put cobble in and it will be turned into compressed cobble, but everything else is not being taken out at the moment and we need to address that situation. So that's our next step. After that, we have got quickly to deal with the situation of having the annihilation planes on the front because we are going to bump into this big cobblestone pillar and then ahead of that we're then going to bump into this thing. So, first things first, deal with the excess that's coming out. Um, it's just spraying out the top. Then second thing, deal with bumping into stuff. So, let's get back to the base and come up with a smarter way of dealing with all the stuff that we are getting. Now, we do want the ores to be semi-processed. Where's our way out? Here it is. We do want our ores to be semi-processed because these are going to be, at the moment, we can use these uh, for their EMC value. Later on, once we've got an AE system, we will be um, putting them into storage. And we'll probably what we'll want to do at that point is we will want to um, smelt them into ingots as well. But for the moment, um, we want to just pulverize these things. But feeding them in here like that is not working at the moment. So that pulverizer is not nearly fast enough for us at the moment. Now we don't have a sag mill, but we can make this into much faster. Now we've got three augmentation slots in that. I must have actually at some point been sensible and thought to our version. So if we have a look at augments, um, we can see that we've got these things. The reception coil, the overclocking modular gearbox, and the space-time flux unifier. These are the three tiers of speed upgrades. So if we have a look, um, level one is double the speed. It does double the energy used, or rather it doesn't double it, add, it's plus 50 percent. Then that one doubles the energy use, but it's four times the speed, and then that one's one and a half times the energy use again, and is eight times speed. But you need all you need to have the third tier you need to have the first and second to have the second tier you need the first one so we need to make all of these basically is what i'm saying so we need bronze a redstone reception coil and redstone we need bronze gold and pyrithium dust and we need gold and ender pearls well we've got pyrithium dust here so we can do that for a start and let's go and get we need, uh, well, let's just do ingots. So we need, for the reception coils, we need gold. And we need three of those. And then for first tier, we needed bronze, four of. But then the second tier, we needed another two of that. Then we need another two for the second tier of gold. And then one, two, three, and four for that. And then we also need, um, oh, more redstone. So we need one, two, one, two, one, two takes care of our, con our reception coils, then a further two for the first tier, we've got the pyrithium dust for the second tier, and then ender pearls for the third tier. We should be good with that. Right, so let's make our reception coils, like that. Hmm, should have made more, but it doesn't really matter. And then we can go bronze like that and then 
is it bronze like that again? I think it is. And that makes our first reception call like that. Makes our second, not reception call, first augment. And then like this, makes our third one. Excellent. Okay, let's pop these in. Boop, boop, and boom. There we go. That is significantly faster. Brilliant. And in fact, I think the limiting factor is probably going to be this thing, so we need to make some upgrades for that, probably. How's it doing? Oh no, that's keeping up. That's keeping up just fine. Okay, next thing. I would like a better way of doing this because having that out there is not ideal. So, I think Steve's factory manager is going to be our friend here. Now, I want to have a clean up a little bit of my inventory. Uh, we will need those later on and those later on. We don't need any more kinesis pipes and red pipe wire. They can go back into the storage. Um, we'll need those later on. Um, and we might we? No, we won't need any of that. I did make a huge amount of insulated redstone and ended up not actually requiring it. I'll get rid of that and that as well. Well, that's kind of full. I need to sort that out at some point soon. And also can get rid of that. Let's do that. That, that. We'll need barrels. So we'll need a bunch of barrels, but we'll need the manager for Steve's factory manager, and we'll need cables. And let's just do a bunch of these. In fact, what I want to do is I want to make Steve's factory manager um, uh, what's it? Camouflage cables. So, so Steve's factory manager. Transforming cable camouflage. It doesn't need to be the transforming stuff, but we will need advanced cable clusters, which is cable clusters, which is three like that. So if I get six, I can learn one. So let's do that with that. And now that's good. And then it needs to be what that and that makes the advanced one, which means this one means that it will act as a cable as well um, and can take multiple things. So we need those so I can get actually get rid of these. And then we need to have cable camouflage which is green blue and red wool and it does need to be green blue and red wool so we need red we have cactus green I don't know if we got green yes we do because I went and got it a little while back and blue which is lapis and then we need wool so I need three like that I really should have definitely have learnt this one because it's going to become useful but we can now go that that and that like that and put these back in here because we're going to need those advanced cable clusters now the cable camouflage does need one of them and then we need not the rapid item valve we need the cable camouflage we don't need the transforming stuff. Double-sided cable camouflage. Do we need double-sided or just cable camouflage? I think just cable camouflage will be fine. Yeah. Okay. So if I do wool now, I can go like that, like that, and like that. Then put that in there with these round it will make cable camouflage. Brilliant! Pop that in there. Now need a few of these. Twelve will do. Definitely will do. And then similarly we'll do that. 
uh, and put here we go and then that is sorted now what I do want to do is I'll have that there is there actually any sound? there is sound, ok it's just very quiet at the moment that's all Right, so we've got our cable cam camouflage here. If we put it on, then I'm not going to do much of this on camera, but I can show off the camouflage. So the camouflage is like in like that, and then I would go set camo and choose a block and say brick. If I set that brick camouflage there, put it on, boop, suddenly it becomes a brick. So I'm not altogether sure. Maybe I'll have it as brick, but maybe I'll have it as something like... Ooh, I've just thought, just thought... One that would be really kind of cool would be a laboratory block one. One of the laboratory blo blocks that would look very cool for this. Kind of that one or that one. wonder if it'll do it. Oh, I'll do that at one. Yeah, that one would that look cool? I think that would look cool. Yeah, I think that would look very cool. So if I do that, and then all of these ones along here will be like that. So we can go and then I can get rid of this because we will have that input one over somewhere sensible and then we will have we'll maybe have it on top of there because it's going to be fairly obvious and then all the rest of these ones will be camouflaged and we'll have maybe barrels on the top like that I think that would work quite nicely. So if I shift this like that and put that up there and then we can say well this can move for the moment and I will have a dolly there to do that and then we can turn this back around and we can say this one is set up so it's in at the top. So if we make all of them in at the top and out at the side, in at the top, out at the side, and these ones are all smelting, yeah, that's what we want. Configure, and that's in and out at the top as well. I'm not going to do those ones quite yet, but we'll keep with those. So all the blocks that we want to camouflage, do all, and now they're all like that. That looks pretty cool, I like that. Now if we get some more barrels, and we're going to say, we don't need that one anymore, so we can get rid of that. I know it's the wrong thing, there we go. So... What have we got? We've got pulverized iron. Shall we just put pulverized iron in there? And what we've got still in here, we've got iron. So we would say, well, I would get rid of this. And like I say, I'm not going to do all of this on camera, I'm just going to do the first little bit to kind of show what I mean. So we create an input and it's going to be from there. And it's going to take pretty much everything in. But we want just for the pulverizer one where is the pulverizer? pulverizer, there we go and the target is the upside yeah, that's fine, it's found that out and I'm only going to whitelist iron ore like that so now if we go like that it's going to take all of that and it's going to put it in there now I also want another trigger. Maybe I could work off the same trigger here. I'm going to do an input over here and an output over here. 
because it's going to input from all of the machines. What I'm going to do, I didn't know I did RF ones, okay. Um, we want a container variable and we want one variable called uh, uh, outputs. Yeah? And it's going to be orange. And the container types are all going to be inventories because that's where we're going to output to. And those containers are going to be that for the time being. But I can add on to that. So we'll put that up there. And we'll have another variable called, what we're going to call it, um, um, we're going to call it machines or machine outputs. Yeah, machine outputs, I think. And we'll have that one as the white. Now, this one's actually, I'm going to change the name of that one from outputs to storage. That makes more sense. And those containers are pretty much all the machines. The extractor, not the MFE, but the energetic infuser, the compressor, um and some furnace pulverizer, all these things that are gonna have stuff in them that we might want to take out. Now in actual fact, I'm just going to configure them one at a time as I do them, but the pulverizer is certainly going to be one of them. So, um, we want to go, the input is going to be from machine inputs, and then we want to go inventories, and the output is going to be, go to the variables, to storage. So this is going to be just basically if there's anything in our machine outputs stick it into our barrels. Now it's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? It's triggered there. Input. Ah, because it's going from the wrong side. Now, what side is that? It's from the north side, is the output of all of our machines now. So, uh, deactivate that one, activate that one, and I think, yep, that has worked. It has taken the stuff from the iron ore from the output and put it into our barrel up here. If we get another barrel, and put it up there and add it to Uh, we'll, we'll get a few of these, but if we get another barrel and add it up there and make it um, a part of that variable, so our storage variable containers, the other barrel, boom, it's got the invar, or ferrous rather, not the invar. So we can add these things up here all the way along. Now if we lock these, and we lock these at the moment, we can be a bit more sensible about how things happen. So I can take, uh, let's say, our copper, put that up there. Let's just go and do copper like that. That's good. And say the lead, but let's have a look and see what, we've got. what else we've got in here. Tin ore, silver ore. Let's do. Well, let's put it in there and say, okay, we want to do, um, this is for the pulverizer, isn't it? One pulverizer, save that, and the items, we want to whitelist um, silver ore as well, not silver fish. Silver ore, like that. Now all we need to do is add that on, and immediately all of that silver ore is come from here into there straight away. Now it's not putting it anywhere because we don't have an unlocked barrel up here, and we also haven't added these things onto our storage. Uh, so we go in here, 
and we can go, we can actually do it sensibly if we go barrel like that then we can do all and that's those, yep, that's those barrels all sorted out. Now if I take a little bit of silver from here you'll see as soon as I add it in there, boom, it's added the rest from there. If I take the lead from here and add it in there, boom, it's going to add in the lead from there because it now has somewhere to go. So I can go ahead and add a bunch of stuff up here to take care of all of our ores here and it will be automatically, and we add them into the whitelist here to be processed and it will take care of those really nicely. Now what we could do is we can have another ender chest as the very last one over here and that can go on for further processing. So we could do all the processing in here and then output it to a secondary ender chest and do our outputting or whatever we want to do from there. But this means that we're a little bit more versatile and it looks pretty cool for what it is at the moment. So uh, I'm going to go off and do that in between episodes. I think we've hit the wrapping up point, so we haven't quite got to the point that we're sticking the annihilation planes on the front. So um, if I get all this stuff sorted out and get it so it clears out this in between episodes, next time we'll be on to a point of adding the annihilation planes. I think that's not too bad for one episode. So until the next time, it's Cheaty Bye for me, and have a funs.